Beat Radio, presented by Andy Morehart of Bloomington. Over the middle, second guess, fires, throws, does he make the catch in the end? Bounces into Cody, puts it up, scores! Now, from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, here's your host, Jim Coyle. Well, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Charlie Miller with us, as always. And, of course, uh, the star of uh, Each Monday, Don Fisher, with us uh, as well, as we're going to be talking about uh, Indiana's contest over the weekend uh, with number eight, Cincinnati, a golden opportunity, plenty of other things we'll get to, the Colts, uh, lots of other games, Big Ten matches over the weekend. But uh, what we want to get to with Don, Don, how are you doing, first of all? I'm doing just fine. I may be the only one in the country that's doing just <laughs> fine because <laughs> Colts and who's your country, but uh, I'm doing fine. Yeah, it's uh, not going well for if you're a fan of either one of those uh, two programs right now. Uh, Indiana welcomed in a uh, number eight Cincinnati team with an excellent opportunity to prove a lot of people wrong and prove a lot of things wrong. And they had nothing but opportunity to do that. And we're not able to get that done, Don, basically. No, they weren't. Um, it was really a good performance for 27 and a half minutes on Saturday. Uh, they played terrific. They, they jumped out to a 14 nothing lead, uh, had a third down and 10 uh, situation where the play was ran. They, the pass was incomplete. Should have been fourth down and a punting situation for Cincinnati. And Indiana gets a targeting call on their outstanding linebacker, Mike McFadden. And before we go any further with that, they have got to change that rule. I didn't even uh, know it existed. Well, if, I mean, it's it's targeting if you use the crown. Oh, the rule. To, I thought rule. I was talking about. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, would, uh, I didn't know they could go back and look at a replay about something else and call a foul like that. But yeah. I interrupted you. I'm sorry. But, yeah, I agree with you on the targeting call. It's horrible. Yeah. I mean, they, they've got to change the rule. And, and look, I understand safety aspects of every – but football's football. <laughs> I mean, guys get shoved into other people, and the crown of the helmet hits the guy with, and the, the other guy's helmet. Uh, that's not a targeting. That's not a targeting call. And if you looked at it, by the very definition of the rule, you could say, yeah, a crown of the helmet hit this kid, uh, his helmet, uh, it's targeting. It's not targeting. If it was targeting, it had to be intentional. Right. You know, and there there could be a personal foul called there if you wanted to. I mean, there are, there are flagrant one and flagrant two in basketball, right? Absolutely. So why, why can't you have a flagrant one or a flagrant two at the college level as well? There was no intent on Mike McFadden to spear the guy, to use it or, yeah. or target the guy in any way. It was just a guy shoved in. He was shoved into this quarterback and his helmet happened to hit the other kid's helmet. That's not targeting. So I don't, they've got to change that rule, but that, that play that changed the whole dynamic of this football game. And the next thing you see is Cincinnati takes advantage of it. They score a touchdown then Indiana does something silly again and get the, give up a field goal in the final seconds. And now it's 14 to 10. All the momentum is on Cincinnati's side. And from that point on, it was a shootout type of performance. And uh, without Mike McFadden in there, it definitely gave Cincinnati an advantage. Yeah, the tone absolutely changed. And I agree with you a thousand percent. Unbelievable that, that I, I did. First of all, I didn't know that they could go back on replay looking at something else. And, and pull that penalty out. I mean, what's the difference between pulling that out, pulling out illegal use of the hands, unnecessary roughness? I don't know. I, I didn't know they could go back and do that while looking at something else. But that's another thing. But, yeah, there's no intent whatsoever. Now, had, had that been just on the other side of the half, he would have had to sit out a half of next week. Fortunately, that wasn't the case. But it's an unbelievably egregious penalty for something completely and totally unintentional that completely changes the tone of a lot of games and a lot of teams. And it's, it's not really uh, it, it's not fair in any way. Oh, I, again, I, I, they've got to change the rule. They've got to look at it and they've got to do it immediately. But of course it won't be done until next year. So uh, of course. it's going to continue to be the same thing. 
Now, maybe, maybe. Uh, and then I'll come for offensively. If, it's, if it happens Go again ahead. in another ball game, and every and the officials have all talked about it, they they may not call that. I mean, it, it, this may have changed how they think about it. But unfortunately, at this juncture, it doesn't help Indiana in any way, shape, or form. No, and I'll be honest, I hadn't seen that. I know that they went to great lengths to call that play for a year or so to, to make sure to get that into the forethought of, of players and to try to get them to hitting safer. And, and I get that. And now they feel like they had gotten there. I have not really seen or heard that that penalty called that much, if at all, this year. And to clearly be able to see something that was unintentional and to call that, I, I don't understand the purpose of it by the officials even now. Uh, if you want to go by the absolute rule, uh, the, it, it, I guess, but they're not doing that for every play. So why not put the same subjectivity there that you do in other places? I, I don't understand, but that's the way it is. And it definitely changed the course of the outcome of this game. Well, one other thing about that, every running back in the country uses his helmet. Every single one because they put that head down, they're driving into the tackler or into the line of scrimmage. They've got the head down. They're using the helmet. I, I get why they have the rule about targeting, but if if that's not targeting, I don't know what is. So uh, I, it, it, again, we we can sit here and lament about <laughs> the, the rules for the next uh, thousand years, but it's not going to change anything until the rule changes. No, on the other side of the ball, Fish, uh, Indiana has got to get a, a, a more cohesiveness with them. They they were able to do some things. The running game was okay, but Stephen Carr, I think, ended up with maybe a 2.5 average per carry uh, early on. Cincinnati made some adjustments. Indiana not able to do and get the red zone up. You see the, the story of the game there, Cincinnati, or, uh, Cincinnati 5 of 5 in the red zone. Indiana had six trips and only cashed in three times. Well, there's no doubt that the offensive line is still very much a question mark with this ball club. And I say that not to disparage the offensive line, but we are not seeing they're not we're not seeing the protection for Michael Penix because he's getting chased around a lot. He has to get rid of the ball most on every play early if he's not going to get chased. They're not opening holes where these guys, I mean, I think Tim Baldwin had a really good game on Saturday with the exception of one play, as we all know, uh, down at the goal line when he fumbled it. It was late in the contest, and I really feel bad for him in that regard because I thought he he was the best running back of the two. And I think Stephen Carr is a really good back, too. I'm not getting – I'm not trying to get him over – Baldwin over Stephen Carr. But Baldwin was the more effective of those two running backs on Saturday, in my opinion. And – um but, but you just can't – you've got to have some holes where these guys can work and, and where they can make some plays. And I just don't see them. And, and I, I could point out one particular player that I think is really having a struggle at this point, but I'm not going to do that because that would be putting the whole onus on him. But at the same time, as a group, this team is still not blocking the way that they have to block if we're going to be successful. And what's, uh, I guess, a little befuddling about that, Charlie, to bring you in, is these are veteran guys. And, and it's just like if, when you're going on to the court, the expectations, when you have a group of veterans, the high expectations are higher. Uh, and unfortunately, we're going to have to readjust the expectations for this football team right now. Uh, but they're not performing at the level anyone expected. I don't know if expectations are fair for us to put on them, but when they uh, – uh, achieve a level like they did last season uh we expect to see that again and especially when you've added a little bit to that but they haven't and it, it's it, I, I don't understand where the disconnect is yeah I, I say you know when you have a veteran group there is a high expectation because you're you know you're passing on a tradition of, of what's being done routine wise practice game preparation now with the struggles right now there's a question mark so, I mean, on a positive side, you get the younger players probably more optimistic to get playing time, right? I mean, because you got to figure something out. I mean, I, I'm not saying, you know, there's a dire straits situation, but you got to figure something out because you're going to now in the Big Ten where it's not going to get easy. I mean, you, you, had some, you had some opportunities that slipped by, who knows why. You got a quarterback that's struggling. That, I mean, it is what it is. Like, I mean, there's going to be questions. 
And, and now you got to think about every – today's an off day typically, uh, or yesterday might have been an off day for those guys who played Saturday. So now Sunday, film study coaches, right? And what are the players thinking about? Players talk, right? You know, who, who's going to who's gonna do what? Who's Is now the young quarterback going to get more reps with the first unit? So you got a lot of holes, and you want to figure something out. So you hope you have time, but I don't know how much time you really have to adjust because you got to get some wins under your belt. Yeah, Don, and of course this week they grab up a, a game that's, uh, I don't want to call it a trap game, uh, but it's a weird game. You go on the road for a non-conference game to a place that you should easily handle, uh, Western Kentucky. Uh, they have been scoring a lot of points. I, I don't fear anything. This defense has looked like, looked like a defense that could play with about anybody in the country, so I don't have a lot of fear for uh, that those guys there, but it's, this is just a game that when you don't have a lot of confidence offensively, it's it, it could be a little dangerous sometimes. Well, there's no question, but it's not. I, I, I there's no way this is a trap game because if, <laughs> if Indiana is not ready to play this game and win this football <laughs> game, there is no trap here at uh, all. Because right now, is this football team desperately needs a victory? Uh, they've lost to two highly regarded football teams. Obviously, Iowa's been in the top ten now. Um, Cincinnati is certainly still there at number eight last week, and they won't move down. I can't conceive that they would move down after beating Indiana. Um, there is little doubt that they've played two really good football teams, and they've lost to both of them, and that's disappointing. It's more disappointing, however, the way Indiana has lost. Uh, the mistakes, the lack of execution, um, the quarterback play, the, uh, the offensive line play, uh, and Saturday – uh, in some respects, you could blame the Indiana defense a little bit, too, because the Indiana defense didn't perform as they needed to a couple of times in that second half. Uh, they certainly did up until halftime or just two and a half minutes before halftime. But after Michael went out, they weren't the same defense either. So there is no way that you could look at this game with Western Kentucky as a trap game. This game is a must win game for this Indiana football team. Absolutely. I know you've got the coaches show again coming up this Wednesday at 7.05 at Southern Stone Restaurant with uh, Coach. Yep, Coach Allen uh, and I will have our discussion. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he handles all that. And we must mention that in, in the post game on Saturday, he talked about Penix having to go through some kind of a situation uh, in regard to x-rays. I don't right. know. At one point we saw Penix holding the elbow uh, in this contest, at another point, he was holding his right hand, I think it was. Um, and uh, so I don't know what the x-rays were all about. We'll get a determination on that at the press conference today. But um, the the other question is, how, how big a leash do you have on Michael Penix at this point? Uh, when do you give the, the, the next guy up the chance if he continues to make these decision-making mistakes as much as throwing mistakes in the game? Because... It's the decision making to me that has bothered me more than anything else at this point. Uh, and that just tells you that Michael's head isn't where it has been in the past in regard to his executing plays or seeing the field, all those kinds of things. So at some point, uh, Mike's performance has to change pretty dramatically if this Indiana football team is to be the team that everybody thinks they can be. Yeah, the six picks thrown uh, in two games, really, and, and a lot of those were forced errors that Don is talking about there. Uh, and then so a lot of people have wanted to see Jack Tuttle, which uh, I, I did not think that we were talking about a quarterback situation, especially three games into this season. But we are, and uh, we'll see you next week, Don, and we'll see uh, you at the coaches' show. I wish you a great rest of your week. Actually, I'll see the press conference in about two hours. <laughs> we'll see you guys then. See you. Thanks, Charlie. Right, Thank the great Don Fisher joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat along with Charlie Miller. We're back with more right after this. We'll be right back to the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim oh. Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Hey, Hoosier fans. Ooh, howdy, buddy. Hi, Charlie. How are you, brother? Good, man. How you doing? Running around on like a crazy man on Monday, as always. Gotcha. Where are you located? I'm downstairs just inside the football facility. It was raining, okay. so I, okay, okay, I, stepped, okay. I stepped in. I like to Charlie, go back outside. Charlie, did you get a new microphone? You sound different today. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, uh, is it better or worse? I think it sounds more clear. Well, uh, we I got it uh, several weeks ago. 
Okay, but you, you're using it today, though. I bet I've been using it, but I mean, thanks for the notice. But yeah, I, I've been. <laughs> yeah, it just looks. It just sounds different today. I don't know what. Right, well, good. Also, your camera also looks clear too. Maybe I. Just I got a new camera way. too. I, I, I Maybe. A weeks ago. Okay, well, well good I think you're you know, not paying attention, John. I mean, I said mm. these things a couple weeks ago, and I think you were just like, "All right, whatever." I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. So yeah, I got, I got a little. I got like an external webcam. Um, that's consistent because the one I have my computer is inconsistent and the microphone is um, I actually have a mic. See, oh, look at him go! Yeah, that's Holy a nice microphone, by the Growing way. up, man. I, I gotta yeah. get ready, John. I'm getting ready for the podcast, man. That's <laughs> right. You gotta get ready, man. I'm getting ready. So I, I gotta have these little, little the essentials, man. All right, Jim. Um, we're calling Ron. Be out of this next segment by... 37. If that Charlie, the answer's a good idea. You told him what, 35 ish? When That's you told 35, you yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll be out of this early. Who's on this segment? Anyone? Nobody. But just don't oh. go early, early. But 35 is probably the when you need to go, at least, I guess. Holy moly. That's has he, I wonder how many interviews he's even done since. Yeah, man. I, I don't think, I don't, I wonder how many people coach have talked to. But, um, yeah, he, he, I appreciate it. Coach will call me out of the blue, man, and we'll talk for a while. It's good to always hear from him. You know, he's here in Bloomington. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. So that'll be – that's pretty cool. I know he's not doing as well as – what. of course, everybody's getting over, right? That's right. That's right. I cannot believe I haven't figured out that you've been using the mic and camera unless you just weren't using it properly the past couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you for the um, <laughs> the rookie, <laughs> the rookie uh, <laughs> mistakes. But it might not be, but I'm just I'm just noticing today for whatever reason. I'm just I, noticing. Hey, I take it, man. I take it. I, I, I'm glad there is a noticeable difference, and that's a good thing. All right, Play here it. we go. We got a few seconds. With hometown service. With First Federal, you can do that. This segment is brought to you by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Now back to the Golf Club and Eagle Point Studios for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Here's Jim Coyle. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio, coming to you here on this Monday. I'm at the uh, Indiana football facility is getting ready for the post game or the week press, the Monday press conferences that go on, Charlie happening. Uh, they'll talk. Tom Allen was not happy, obviously after uh, the performance on Saturday, didn't take or didn't make an opening statement, just went right to questions. And I understand. I mean, he's when, when Bob Knight would get upset, it was, because of a lack of execution of things right. that you all practiced right. over and over and no. over. No. No. And it drove him absolutely nuts. But that's the thing. That's the kind of things that drove him nuts is just the lack of execution on things you're prepared for. Well, and you just said the key word. Um, if you weren't going to say, oh, okay, that's preparation, right? And, you know, coach would say, hey, everybody wants to win, but the preparation to win is different. And I think – that's what's most frustrating for coaches. You you go in all week, you're preparing, watching film, you have your breakdown, your breakout sessions per, uh, you know, head coach of the quarterbacks, defensive backs, linemen, and you put the game plan together and the game plan does not work. So there's a scorecard, right, that's going to take place. You know, and I mean, the coaches got to take account for what's going on, the lack of play, uh, the lack of execution, the no all the adjustments that players are making and, and and to go to a presser and to say the same things every week about why you're losing, you want to just go right to the question and get it over with. And because let's face it, you're not going home as a head coach. You're not going home as a scissor coach until That's probably right. <laughs> the next morning. I mean, I'm just like, I mean, I, I know those stories of the coaches kind of getting on us a little bit about how they have to stay in the locker room to, you know, two, three in the morning watching film. What, why is Charlie playing so bad? What, what's going on? You know, so it's so I can only imagine on that side with that many more players what they're going through, but it's all a process. 
when I was leaving the stadium, I was wondering that thing with because I leave. It's it's a couple hours That's right. uh, after the game once I get out of here. But I was like, wonder how much longer those coaches are going to be. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I, I, I said, swear that's yeah. that is something that crossed my mind. Saturday. Um, yeah, and, well, thank you, man. I'm going to tell you a story right now. Uh, me and you know, not to put the other player out there, but just me and another player. Uh, I, I was having a good stretch during my junior year playing. I was inconsistent one game, and it was one of those games where. For whatever reason, you you know, you get substituted in to play and then you come out, in out. And, and I, you know, I grew some hair on my chest, Jim, and I told Coach Knight after the game, I said, man, man, I'm not a robot, man. I need to play. Oh, my goodness. Dude, that was the worst thing I could say after that game because we were up 15. <laughs> Just like similar to here, we were up 15 points, lost by 17 at home. So think about that 32-point swing, right? And, wow. and, and all of what was going on defensively, obviously, and, and I and I said to Coach Man, I'm not a robot, and I'm gonna just tell you there were some things flying. And uh, watching the game over after the game, this player I'm talking about had his parents come in town because he was kind of regionally, and he couldn't go out to see his parents. And I remember watching the game, going over with a tape recorder, what my mistakes were the whole entire game. So, I mean, I share that story with you to say. I can only imagine what the coaches had to go through not leaving, you know, but that's what you sign up for at that level. Oh, absolutely. And there's going to be the pressure will start to grow a little bit because the exactly. expectations were very high from this season exactly. based off of last season, everything exactly. coming back. Like we talked earlier, you got a veteran core right. uh, on the O line. And so not performing there, that's, that's it. That's a problem. Uh, so yeah. the reason those expectations were set where they were, were legitimate and, now, I, I'm serious. I'm wondering how difficult is it going to be for Indiana to gain bowl, bowl eligibility? Mm -hmm. uh, you have to start counting wins on this schedule. Right. And I haven't come up with six yet. Um, it's going to take an upset along the way. And right. I don't know where that upset's going to take place, but I can't believe uh, that saying that, but uh, that's the case. Yeah, and listen, man, you're not in a good spot. I mean, you you're just not. Let's just call it what it is. I mean, you you know, you you had a winnable game at home. Uh, you had a top ranked team on the ropes. One play makes a, a big difference. One player makes a big difference. You know, so you got to think about depth. You got to think about reps and practice. So I, I'm more certain all these things are be on the table um, in that locker room today when they get back preparing for West Kentucky. Yeah, and then another, like as Don pointed out, that's not a trap game just because right, right. Indiana is. It, it, in the beginning of the season, maybe it was. It would have been considered that no longer. Um, every There is no game on Indiana's schedule that, that would be considered that now. Uh, right. So, But it's what it's – I don't know if I'd call it – it's concerning. Um, yeah. You're going on the road to do something you normally don't do, a non-con game. So uh, that's going to be a difficult situation. And that's the thing about football. You know, at least with basketball, the saving grace could be, Jim, we, we lost Wednesday on a tough game. We could play Saturday, and there's not that much time in between where everyone has to kind of have a short-term memory and, and kind of forget, but, like, let's get better. Football, there's a whole week in between. Now you got to also go travel. Yeah, and that adds to it as well. And it's a, a, a short – while it's a short one, it's not um, – it, it's an unusual one. You're going to, right. to Bowling Green, which is, uh, I don't know, three and a half hours from here. So they'll probably bust down, not right. fly down like they do right. mostly. So you've got that difference. Um, it's just a lot of differences for this game, for a game that normally would not have much significance, but right now it, it does. Oh, man, you, I, I feel – I mean, like you said, it could be too early, but I feel their season is on the line. I mean, this is a – you put yourself in a position that there's a must-win game to me. Like, you can't lose this going Oh, that's absolutely, because yeah. we're, yeah. we're already counting wins for bowl eligibility. I'm, right. I haven't come up with six. Like I said, this is one of those. Right. Um, they should have won the Cincinnati game. Let's just be honest. Cincinnati did not look to me like a top-10 team. They didn't look to me like a top-15 team. Uh, maybe part of that was because of Indiana's defense did a great job, but India, Indiana has without question, a top 10, top 15 defense. They don't have, they have a top 30 offense right now. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately that 
the defenses can't make up enough for the offenses in, in, in ability. And because right. all it would have taken was just a little bit of execution on, on Saturday to win that game um, or the lack of mistakes, the, the, the turnovers, just incredible. I mean, you cannot do that. Uh, it just forcing plays that is completely unnecessary, swinging the game around. I mean, forget about the Michael McFadden thing. That's legit. But they still, with that, could have easily won that game had they only executed on their own side of the ball. You got the, the your quarterback. I mean, I mean that's that's I mean the, the anchor of your your offense, the, the engine. If there's inconsistent play there, you would hope that the running game or you know tight end, you know, for what I would call dink and dunk, two three yards, get your running backs in position to make plays, yards after catch. If that's not happening, man, that's I mean. That's a that's an uphill battle, Jim. I mean, I you know I, I don't I can't say you know anything outside of football from what I remember playing. But your quarterback's not playing well. Defense, I think, is something you can always control. I mean, because you know you you got you playing with an edge offense, you got to have your skill players make plays for you, and I think that's not happening. Scott uh, says that they, outside of the quarterback, if a team loses one player and collapses the way the Indiana defense did, there's a, a glaring issue of depth. Well, I, I said that earlier in the sense. Depth, There's yeah. definitely that they've got to make up for that. But I think it was not just the, the loss of his play. Mm -hmm. It's his right. leadership, man. He's right. an all American. He is yeah. their leader yeah. and they lost their quarterback. He right. is their quarterback. Uh, right, exactly. And I'm not trying to make an excuse, right, but right. he is a quarterback on defense and it does a lot of things. You saw what he did with the forced uh, fumble and the, and the recovery. I mean, he's just in there. Um, he's just a, a guy who has gone from being a two-star to an All-American. So you don't get there without That's hard right. work and, and doing the things that he's That's done. Right. So there's That's more right. to it than just that. But I agree. Yeah, you've got to overcome adversity. Mm -hmm. And Indiana has not done that. Um, and, and defense is one of the places where they were supposedly deeper than any place. And they didn't show that on Saturday. Well, you, I mean, one, that's a testament to the young man, you know, who has that kind of effect on the team defensively. At the same time, you know, you, you, you know, the, 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 the great teams have multiple players like him, right? One person goes out for whatever reason, control it or not, you know, everybody else had to step up. But, that, I mean, that's a, the tale of two teams almost kind of what happened. Absolutely. Uh, make sure we're checking the clock. Ron Felling going to join us today. Uh, looking forward to talking to Coach Felling. I have not had the opportunity to talk to him before. Uh, you've been talking to him a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, man, Coach Felling was actually instrumental in uh, getting me to come to IU. And I remember, I remember meeting him uh, going into my senior year um, in high school, and he actually showed interest in me. And um, ever since, man, uh, you know, he's been instrumental in a lot of things I do as, as, as far as player development as well. You know, just one of his encouragement, you know, when I'm posting up something on Facebook talking about coaching, and I'll get a call and say, hey, man, you sound clear, sound great. You know, I was like, man, they – you, you know, you got to understand what that means to me. You met me when I was 17. And I'm still learning about basketball, right? But now to hear you compliment me on what I'm doing, man, that this is what it was all about to begin with, right? This That relationship over the long term. Yeah, uh, he's a, a definitely a polarizing figure, but yeah. one that was instrumental in bringing a ton of players yeah. to the Indiana basketball program. And then, of course, polarized for the opposite end of the Bob Knight right. saga, all that. There's yeah. just so much that goes into it. But uh, with all that, he remains in Bloomington, mm -hmm. uh, where, where he is today. So looking forward to talking to him today. Um, what what how, There's a lot of the players that have relationships with, with the – other coach, the assistant, some of the other coaches, assistant coaches from that time. Who oh, for me, or are you saying? Yeah, well, you. Right yeah, now. I mean, uh, I, I would say, um, you know, Coach Coach Felling. Um, I don't, you know, I really, I don't talk to Coach Blockage as much, or, or I mean, I, you know, I follow him on Twitter, or you know, and um, he he went speaking of Bowling Green, right? He he went to Bowling Green. I believe it was my sophomore year, junior year, um, but but I, I think I talk about I talk heavily about Coach Mike Davis. Um, you know, he, he was he came in my senior year, so um, he was very instrumental to a lot of my optimism and positivity my senior year. Just kind of being around, being a good ear, uh, helped me support you know through adversity. Um, I would say those two, uh, particularly for me, I, I stay in touch with the most. 
during that era, how important was it just to have positivity from the assistant coaches? I mean, that was, I would have seen, assumed that was a three fourths of their job. Well, and, and also the vulnerability of co uh, coach Mike Davis. So if you, who now from an inside point of view, take myself 20 plus years ago, he was still learning like to even admit that, like he didn't know what he was doing, paraphrasing, but then that's a person I was relying on because of the way he came from his background. And I mean, again, he looks like me, right? So, you know, the standpoint of playing out of Alabama where he played at, you know, here it is. I'm at Indiana as a young African-American, but having somebody to talk to and just what you're going through and to kind of let you know things are going to be okay. Hey, there's an opportunity for you to play beyond. You're that good. That was just encouraging. And now to look at what he's done 20 plus years later, you know, obviously with a run, back in 2001, taking Indiana to the Final Four in the National Championship game and being there. I was actually in the room, Jim, the night before they played Maryland, watching film, again, watching Juan Dixon, breaking down film. And I'm sitting there like, Coach, man, this is unbelievable. Dude, you said you're going to be a head coach, you know, in two years. We, I mean, think about – I mean, I was just like the, a little night before the game, watching film with Coach Davis, like looking at my – or my brother-in-law, like, man, you see what we're doing? We're watching film. Like, like, these are the last two teams playing. So it's just a great feeling, man. And uh, he's, been a, he's been a big resource for me uh, in player development, uh, sharing film on his son. His son is amazing, amazing basketball player, Jim Antoine Davis. Uh, I mean, his work ethic is just out of this world, and that's just testament to Coach Davis. Yeah, and I like to think about all the players that were on those last couple teams. When yeah. did you – and when did you leave here? 98 or 9? 98. 98. 98. Yeah. So, uh, and then, so the AJ Moyes, I saw kind of come transitioning out. Yeah. Dane, uh, the Dane Fife, the crossover. Dane Fife. Yeah. Coverdale, yeah. Coverdale, Tom Coverdale. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Kirk Haston. Uh huh. The, the governor, I call him the governor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, look at the some of those guys where they were, where they are now. I mean, it's mm -hmm. amazing where they are now. That's right. Uh, it, it's pretty cool to think about. But, yeah, I need to get Kirk back on here, the governor. Um, right. I haven't had him on here for a minute. But what a unique character he was. But what a group of characters that were on that team. I mean, my gosh, think of Dane Fife and Kirk Haston, yeah. A.J. Moye. Uh, those guys were characters. Hey, man, and, and, and what – I mean, and I think we all were to a certain extent. If, you know, you had, I think you had to be – if the remnants of Coach Knight was around. Because, I, you know, I, you know kind of like – the speed of the leader will always determine the pace of the pack. And, I mean, we were right behind him and the others as far as the coaches and, you know, the sense of urgency and importance to preparation and detail. Um, I know that helped me 20-plus years later, Jim, to this day. <laughs> uh, I, we don't have enough time to talk about it now because we're about to take a break yeah. for Coach Felling. But I, I would, a lot of people make comments, and they don't know. It's right. just an opinion. How much – and I know that there's some, a lot – but once Coach Knight was gone and Mike Davis was was and that team was going to play in the uh, in 2002, mm -hmm. everyone everyone keeps saying, "Well, that was were Knight's players." Well, yeah, they were, but it took a combination of things for that run to happen. I don't think that run happens with Bob Knight in place, uh, but it doesn't happen without him having been in place. Uh, it's a unique thing. Well, exactly, and one of the reasons could be hearsay. Just Charlie's opinion, put it this way. One of the reasons I felt it happened because those are all Coach Davis's recruits. Yeah. <laughs> so so the word on the street, take it for what it's worth, is, you know, when Coach Davis was approached to say, hey, let's all leave, it was a no because I recruited the majority of these guys and I, I want to stick this out, right? So – so yeah, who knows, right? It, but but it was a mixture, right? Uh, Absolutely. Of, of that and who knows that that formula? But you know the head, you know one of the head recruiters at that time was Coach Davis. He was brought in for the opportunity to recruit. Well, we got to take a break. Speaking of recruiters, one of the great ones over the uh, several years right. in Indiana, Ron Felling, and he is going to join us next here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Back with it right after this from the golf. Philip at Eagle Point Studios, brought to you by the fine folks at Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Make sure you go to andymorehonda.com, get your Honda ordered so it's ready for you when you come there. Back with more right after this. 
We'll be right back to the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Whether you're looking for... All right, let's do this. Hey. Hey, man. Hello? <laughs> Oh, I thought that was for real. No. Good thing you call him early. Yeah. To an automatic voice okay. message system. Let's try again. I mean, I'm going to call him because I'll go here looking out for me or not. Yeah, he doesn't know that recognize that number. Yeah. I sent him a text message. His, his wife was like, uh, yeah, he doesn't text, but he got your message. <laughs> your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message yeah. system. Eight, one, two, three, six, one, four. Hey, Coach Fellings, Charlie, uh, we're giving you a call to get you set up for uh, the radio show. Uh, you, you're going to see a number, a 502 number, uh, area code. Uh, it's an 812 number. It's 812. What is that number, John? Should I give it out, Jim? Oh, we well, don't. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Eight, eight, it's, yes, yes. It's, it's the text line number, 812-269-6367. 3667? 6367. 6367. Coach Dave, uh, I'm sorry, Coach, Coach Felling, let me, let me give him a call back. All right. I'm calling him everything but the right number. If you are satisfied with your message, Press one. Message erased. At the tone, please re-record your message. Hey, John, give me some Big Ten scores in the weekend. I, I'm using my phone, so I, I've got no, I got no use. Uh, Minnesota beat Colorado thirty to zero. Oklahoma beat Nebraska twenty three to sixteen. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Michigan State beat Miami. Yep. 38, 17. Michigan won big. One, two, three. 27, 13. Hey, Coach, it's uh, Charlie. Hey, you're going to get a phone call, Coach, from a number. It's 812-269-6367. Uh, that's going to set you up for the call uh, for the radio show. Okay, I look forward to hearing from you, Coach. Bye-bye. All right. Are we ready to come back in? We got 10 seconds. Sure. Okay. I would say give him a shout if you can. Come see us okay. at the all new Andy Moore Honda. Now in Bloomington. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Now back to the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Here's Jim Coyle. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat, coming to you and on this Monday from the great folks at Reynolds Family Dentistry. Go see Dr. J if you're down in the Sellersburg, Southern Indiana area. He'll take care of you, give you that championship smile. Uh, there's some Big Ten teams smiling over the weekend, Charlie. Michigan State is one that comes to mind. They go oh, on yeah, the road down to your country, man. They come down to South Beach. Yeah, 35 0. Is that right? Is that something like that? Did they really do that? I, I see. I thought Michigan stayed up. It was going to go from Michigan and down to that South Beach, and that heat was going to wear on them. Nope. They they put the beat down on the Canes, man. Yeah, yeah. And and again, I you know the Facebook groups I'm a part of. So you know we have several you know sports people back in the day, and oh man, it's it's just it's funny because you see all of the head coaches from the uh, social media. And how the, the lack of fundamentals of players and the dis I'm like, oh, you guys are regular civilians, man. Just let these kids play. But you know, it you know, fire the coach. It's like, uh, but yeah, they came down and they took care of business. They took care of business. That's they did it. And Michigan State is is a team that uh, was knocked down a little bit. They uh, Mark D'Antonio let go, and uh, a new coach comes in over COVID. So you don't see a lot now. They use the transfer portal. Man, they're looking good. They're rising up. So they're a team that is – Indiana had, had 
move themselves up into what I call the big four of the Big Ten East. But right now they've moved themselves back out of that because Michigan also looking good. I think they scored 60 this weekend wow. over – it was a, a not a, a big team or a big game, but still you're putting up those kind of numbers. But they're at home, and it's, it's difficult for any team to go into a stadium like that and play well because I'll tell you, uh, got to give a shout-out to the Indiana student section. They caused havoc for the Cincinnati offense. They forced them into eight, eight false starts in that game. Nice. But three were early, and it was all on that end where the, the student section, student section. was. Uh, so, and I think they had eight total either false starts and offsides between the two. John, yeah, hey, you- the only way that I can test this phone call and see if he'll answer is if I'm in here. So we got to pause the conversation. Let's see if we can get Ron Felling on the line. Okay. Or you can use your own phone to call him to see if he answers first. So, um, but while we're doing that, uh, I, I forget what I was talking about there. Uh, section. What's that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The student yeah. section. They were uh, unbelievable and it was loud and it took a minute for that stadium to fill up. But once it did, it was a, it was a pretty good sight to see. Uh, and forward, and you, we've talked about whether or not we're going to see that again. It was an excellent opportunity for Indiana um, to do that in front of those fans. Mm-hmm. And had they done that, it would have left a, left a lasting impact. That's right. But the way they lost that game, a very winnable game, mm-hmm. I think that is leaving a lasting impact. And that's – that's the danger that they're going to have to overcome because the expectations, like I said earlier, were, were high, and then you're going to have to overcome that when you don't achieve it. Well, and you hope because, again, that's to me, that's, that's huge as far as what your fans are able to bring to the table, almost like a 12th player. You hope that that now shows up for that next home game or you see those empty sections. That's tough. That almost becomes like a home game for that Aurora that road team because they know the fanfare is not there. Well, in Indiana going on the road to Western Kentucky, um, they're going to, it's not a big stadium, but I'm sure that they know that Indiana is a wounded animal of sorts. And so whatever they have, they're going to try to be as loud as they can be uh, to be disruptive. Then Indiana gets the real, real test. They go to happy Valley. Mm. 100,000 man. You saw what happened. Penn state handled, uh, was it Auburn? that uh, Penn State handled over the weekend, a great game, big Saturday night showdown between the Big Ten and the SEC, and Penn State comes out with a gigantic win. Uh, But it was a uh, 28-20 whiteout win and a whiteout game. But, man, that's 100,000 people, man. That's a lot of noise, Charlie. You're going to a traditional powerhouse. I mean, and as your first or second, I should say, Big Ten contest, and like I said, man, you're coming in kind of scraped up a little bit. Right. I mean, mentally, physically. So you hope not looking too far ahead. You know, you do what you got to do this week to get ready for West Kentucky. But then, you know, you got, you know, you got a big task on your hand going to Happy Valley, man. That's a tough place to play. I can only imagine. that. And that's we're jumping ahead in the end. That's that's hoping that right, Indiana's right. coming back off of a win, right, uh, right, right. which uh, must win down, which would put them back even at two and two on mm-hmm. the season. Uh, and hopefully give them a little hope. But Penn State is riding high on this on this weekend right now. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I mean, so my hopes are, you know, just as a, a, a diehard IU fan, as is, I'm just hoping that we can recover this week and uh, play better. Uh, play better when going into the following. Because, I, I mean, you're going to be one and four. Uh, that's tough. One and I'm, four. I'm, ugh. Yeah, I know the coach you played for did not have any problems, qualms whatsoever about pulling anyone from no. the lineup. No. Indiana is – is I think Indiana is in that position already. I, I would have liked to have seen Jack Tuttle at halftime last week, but – I and, and we don't know what's going to happen. Michael Penix, like uh, Fish brought up, mm-hmm. he, he was taken away for injuries after the game, so we don't know. He may be banged up enough to where that's a moot point, uh, and Jack Tuttle is going to have to be the guy. But I think right now the decision making is is too problematic, yeah. and you can only go so far with that, or you bury yourself with that. Right. And uh, I saw someone make a comment. I think it was Saturday on the post game that they were fearful that coach was going to fall off of that mountain. 
Uh, I, I don't think so, but uh, we'll see. The change has got to come quickly. Well, and that's the thing about it. You know, football, I think, is a little different. Where basketball, someone's not playing up to par. You're already getting reps, right? So if you can easily insert because it's not necessarily like a hockey shift lineup, but you're already practicing and playing together. Football, it's, you know, you got to get the main reps with the first unit. What is the second unit quarterback getting as far as reps? Do you trust a change, a shift like that in the middle of a game? What What is that going to do to your first, you know, depth position quarterback or other positions? That's a, whole, that's a different dynamic that, I mean, I can't really speak too much on, but I can only imagine that that can really shift the way you actually, you know, approach the game uh, by, by inserting a player who may not have got a lot of first – team reps uh, like in, in total situation, you know, last week. The Big Ten looking good right now as a, as a conference. Iowa looking outstanding, uh, a team that uh, gave Indiana that first loss of the season. They are looking good. And like I said, th- I expect them to win the Big Ten West. They are just getting stronger every week. Their schedule is manna from heaven. They have the greatest remaining schedule uh, of anyone. I think there's a game against Penn State. Other than that, um, even the Wisconsin game. I, I don't see anyone else beating Iowa, uh, so they're going to go far. You've got Penn State, who is ranked higher than Ohio State right now. That's going to be a showdown. Uh, the Michigan-Penn State, Michigan-Ohio State games, those are going to be showdowns, man. Uh, the Big Ten is, is is looking a little bit a lot tougher this year, I think, than it did the last season or last season or two. Um how does that help them get a team into the college football playoffs? It, it depends on who does what on each side of the ball, of course. But uh, it, that has been uh, the Buckeyes owning that side of the ledger for Christ right. for the last few years. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, it's good to see this this type of parity in the league. And you got teams stepping up. And, and for once, it may not be Ohio State that's just automatically getting that opportunity. It wasn't a couple of years ago we counted. Was that last year we got? kind of looked over against, Ohio, you know, Ohio State, right? I mean, so, you know, and who knows if that's a little bit of lingering effect. I mean, you know, was that window of opportunity really can break through to the other side of success where these tougher games you're able to pull out or did that take the wins out of the sales where it's like, okay, is this the, you know, what we always come to expect, you know, great high hopes, but yet we never live up to expectations. Yeah, and – Parity is a funny word. I mean, there's I think there's parity at the top of the right. of each right. division, but there's not parity on these wow. in the divisions. But uh, I, I think Iowa could be the strongest representative for the West that, mm. that has had for a couple of years. It it could be the biggest chance that they've had to send a team to the college football playoff. Um, cause I think there's no doubt the Big Ten team has to go this year. There's without question, those teams are too good. Uh, right. I was a, as, as a solid team. Like I said, they have to get better on offense uh, as well. They're, they were when Indiana and Iowa played, they were just a, ahead of them. They didn't make nearly the mistakes, uh, the crowd and all that. Indiana has not improved on offense while Iowa has continued to improve. But they still need to continue on offense, I think, to be a contender at the very top. Well, that's a good thing. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I, I, I can't speak too much on, on, on football, Jim, but, but I, 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 I can imagine – it, it can be about right about time where the big, the big 10 team, you know, gets an opportunity to play. In the and then the, the SEC has gotten four. I think they currently have four teams in the top 10 right now, starting at the top with Alabama and Georgia. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you've got Florida and I forget Texas A&M is in there. Uh, your Aggies, not too far from you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, say, I don't, I mean, the thing about it, it's, it's interesting. How, how does a Nick Saban, how do you have that kind of run? How do you have that kind of run for that long? Is it, is it the coaches you have, the players you're able to recruit? Like, um, a good I have, it yeah. reminds me of uh, John Wooden. Do you know uh-huh. how John? Do you know how yeah. John Wooden had that long of a run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, I see where you're going. I know exactly where you're going, and I have an interesting story I don't want to share because <laughs> 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 it was a it was a guy who played at Kansas. Uh, way back when I just happened to meet transitioning from uh, leaving a gym and we just went off on what we were talking about. 
and you know how he was able to get those kind of players and he's not the person that we all think i'm with you on that like okay i never thought about that but i get you <laughs> yeah it's uh and, and and not alone the southeastern conference is uh they're the leader right. of the pack in that in right. that deal and that, right. that that type of deal so i'm with uh, you i'm with you well, I mean, you look at the the and then, but then now it's not just them, and, and but the NIL has well, changed things because yeah. now you got kids leaving high school early just to get an NIL deal, right? Uh, which is nuts, but yeah, there you go. But and now that machine is, but that machine is so it's a machine, yeah. and they they were doing it for so long, uh, you know, boom, it's going now. Clemson, Clemson's taking a hit, right? Uh, right. they, they were able to keep that up there for a while, but I, I think part of that is because the ACC conference is just horrible. I mean, right. they're the best that they have yeah. and they're falling. Yeah. So it's, things are not looking great for the ACC right now. Definitely yeah. not looking good to have a team into the playoff, which, you know, they've had Clemson in there for several years now, but, um, I don't see that happening this year right now. Yeah, you you look. It's interesting because yeah, talent just it, it, either talent is down in the ACC or something's going on. Um, because you know the powerhouses, I would say the perennial powerhouses, the Florida State's, University of Miami's, just not playing well. Uh, Florida State just lost to a lower ranked team or HBCU. I think it was like I mean, not saying that's you know that they can't it, beat oh, right, but should have you know you should that's not one lose of those games teams. where like an idol comes to Bloomington. That's a you know, we need to make a statement. Let's get this game. You know, we are the better team. You know, and and it's just it's just interesting now to see the change, the shift. But the stronger teams like Alabama continue to get better year over year. Continue, to, you know, produce a lot of professional players in the NFL. So, you know, we'll we'll see. Uh, Scott making Scott obviously was at the game, wasn't happy with the concession stand service. But wow. you know, I do know that you can order that stuff online. I know people, there's like an app and you just go pick it up. But yeah, I, I'm sure that they're not accustomed to having the sold out crowd. So, wow. uh, there's that. But, um, don't have to worry about that for two weeks. And he is on the road for the next couple of weeks, but, that. uh, heading down to Bowling Green and then to Happy Valley. So, They'll have time to get that straightened out, but yeah. it was a sold out crowd. I, I didn't get, I was in the press box, so I couldn't really hear anything, uh, hear how the noise was, but it was obviously very, very effective. Uh, like I talked about early on, uh, but the student section, but it's good just to see that. It would be nice to see that all the time. Right. Uh, like you see at most places, but um, you, you've got to perform in the field. And like we talked about earlier, man, what a golden opportunity lost. You only get so many of those. Um, before it's almost like starting over, and um, and I hope that's not the case for them because I know that they've worked hard to get to to build that fan base up. But we'll see, we'll see what uh, they've got. Some decent games with Ohio State and Michigan State coming in, and Minnesota. Uh, let's be honest; those are going to be all three tough games uh, uh, for Indiana to even be competitive in. But they've got to get an offense that can compete. Do you think Minnesota doesn't have? They're going to come in throwing the ball. We know Ohio State does. Michigan State's already looking good. Those are home games I'm talking about. They've got to travel to Michigan, travel to Penn State. Um, tough places, man. Well, I tell you what, that 11 o'clock start time was 11 o'clock game, correct? That's a great time, man. I can only imagine the weather was probably nice. You had everybody out. Uh, oh, so you talk about last week? Last, yeah. was Dude. 11 o'clock. It was a noon. That's right, because I'm 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 central. Yeah, so noon. Oh, man, I bet the weather was nice. It was, it, it was a good outing. Again, against a top ten team, uh, you came out. You, you did what you had to do. You just couldn't sustain it. You hope that the fans continue to show up and be consistent. I think it's a whole. It's a total effort. Fans, obviously, players got to play better. Because again, if you don't, I I remember being in that stadium where it's half empty, and, and I mean, I can only imagine what my friends were going through as players. Uh, you know how how much can you get up for those those games, uh, and and they don't end up going in your favor. So, absolutely, uh, looking forward to that. We'll see how they can swing it back around when they come back, though. So uh, then we're waiting for we're not that far from Hoosier Hysteria, That's right. uh, October second, I believe. Right. So mm -hmm. just uh, I don't know what is today's date. I have to look at twentieth. So what are we? Uh, just 10, 11, 12 days. So less than two yeah. weeks away from yeah. that. Uh, so there's a lot of excitement building there uh, as we get closer to that. 
looking forward to it. Hopefully Indiana football can get this thing turned around because the bowl game was really something that people are starting to get used to. January bowl games. Right. Six and six and six is not a January bowl game though. So uh, we're going to see what they can get done and what questions they're going to answer as far as at the quarterback of what has happened to Michael Penix. We'll find out about that later on at the press conference as well, like Don said earlier. Uh, John, do we need to go ahead and take a break? I know we're kind of off on the time deal. So yeah, go right ahead. All right, we'll take a break. we got plenty more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. And we're back with it from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, brought to you by Andy Moore Honda. Go to andymorehonda.com, get your Honda brought to you. We'll, talk, we'll be back right after this. We'll be right back to the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Hey, Hoosier fans. What- I'm going to call him back. See what okay. I called him twice in the last 10 minutes. Okay. I didn't get nothing. Your call has been forwarded. Oh, well. We can try later if we need to. Yeah. Um. Are you calling his landline? I'm assuming that's the only thing. That, I, that I think his cell phone. I think it's the only thing he has cell phone. Gotcha. We're supposed to have Jim Reamer up next, I think, either that or 1020. But whenever he's done, we can try one again maybe. Or, and maybe you calling first, let him know that we're going to call him on a different number whenever the time comes. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Man, he stopped letting this stuff. Stop letting this stuff stress me out, man. I let these calls like when we had Dick Vital on over the summer. I let mm-hmm. that stress me out over like way too much for for no reason. That's a big call, man. I, I get this. I wanted to obviously I wanted to work, and obviously this is just because he's not answering. It's not like something's right. going wrong. Jim, can you hear me right now? I think Jim walked away. Well, he, he's setting up a headset. I thought okay. it was. I'm trying to let him know before we come back. I'm going to step aside for the first few minutes of this next segment, or at okay. least wait until Jim Reamer comes on to get him pulled up, and then I'll step aside, but. I hate that. There's no way to like signal to him that, hey, we only got a few seconds left. Oh, Jim. Yeah, because he can't hear nothing. But he might be coming back now. So. Man. Oh, well. May have to adjust a little bit. A long list right, of ready, Jim? beers and all of the right foods to sure. go. With. Plan a day on the lake at Eagle Point in Bloomington, then stay for dinner at Sam's Club. Who do we have? Sam's Restaurant. It's supposed to be Jim York, Reamer, but he's not here yet. This segment is brought to you by Aurora Specialty Sleep Clinic. Now back to the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Here's Jim Coyle. Welcome back. It is Monday. A little rainy overnight, but uh, it never hurts. A little fall rain's helping the grass stay green up here, Charlie. It's uh, been a little bit nicer up here. It's not, it's not drying out as much as it normally does this time of year. Yeah, we haven't had rain here in Dallas in uh, quite some time. It's a pretty cool thing. So I've been able to get out on the course and play and, and not worry about the weather. Actually, it was hot. I started walking. Um, this is actually Coach Felling, guys. I'm... Beautiful. Give, give me one second. I'm sorry. Go me... right ahead. No, you go ahead and take care of that. We'll uh, wait for you to take care and talk to him. He's going to. We're going to get Ron. We're trying to get Coach Felling on yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here joining us as Charlie's talking to him now. 
and looking forward to having him on air. Is Jim Reamer joining us as well right now? What's uh, what's up with you, Air Reams? You know, not much, not much. Just trying to stay dry, I guess today. Yeah, it's uh, we're just talking about that a little overnight showers, <laughs> but uh, keeping things lush and green, man. It's 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 usually not this nice this this late in the year. It seems like, but uh, uh, the weather has been been, been doing well. Yeah, it's going to be what. Cool for a couple days, then back into the seven. It'd be nice. It'd be, it's good Can't complain around. about that. Good walking around, biking weather. Walking golf, walking golf. You can do that, so uh, you can get that done. But that's not my. That's not mill me, mill you. I like to be in the in the carts personally. But uh, I did just get a one of those stupid uh, at a charity thing. I ended up winning winning one of those battery operized walk behind things. Uh, so we're gonna see how that works out. I got to oh, get that thing figured out. No, it's a golf cart caddy oh. Uh, oh. deal. So. so the opposite of a pole cart. Exactly. Pole cart. A motorized push cart. Uh, so, but it wow. still promotes you, promotes walking at least. So I'm going to see what that's like. Uh, not looking. Uh, yeah, it depends on where you go, man. <laughs> if they're too hilly, I'm like, well, screw this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, but we'll uh, see how it is. Uh, Charlie, how did your phone call go? Good. Yeah, he says he's around, so I'm not sure what happened earlier, but I'm just, I guess, I'm letting accident down. It's a good time to be back home. All right. Well, probably here as soon as this segment's done will be great. Okay. Uh, we'll give him a buzz back here in a little bit. Looking forward to that. What were you doing over the weekend there, Mr. Reamer? Actually, spent it basketball. Basketball's back. So, spent um, pretty much every day, Friday, Friday afternoon, most of Saturday, and most of Sunday. Watch well most of Sunday morning, watching basketball. Got got back in time to watch the final three quarters of the Colts game. So, but that yeah, was not chance, much. To, to not to much to watch, watch there. No, not really. Um, not until they can block. So we'll see. Colts are running are, are, are very similar to Indiana right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. The yeah. issues, the problems, very very similar situation. Uh, in similar spots. So, see how they get spot. What did you, where were you over the weekend? You know, so Friday afternoon, went up to Bosco uh, Prep Academy to watch their they, – they are now – this is their first year of undergrad, of having an undergrad team, so basically a high school team. And a lot of kids in that area – well, their whole roster is pretty much kids from northwest Indiana of the of, among the undergrads. Um, Dave Maravella runs that program. I had been – I've known him for a while, and we have a lot of mutual friends, especially up from that part of the state. And I'm pretty outspoken that I'm not a big fan of, of prep schools, at least the the undergrad versions, and and definitely not of the pop up ones that that we're seeing more and more of now. As like we discussed, Bishop uh, since what was that uh, Bishop Cathedral, whatever yeah, that, that Bishop school. Lutheran, Bishop Lutheran. Bishop. Bishop, whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, we'd even had a couple of kids. We had a kid, I, and I can't ever remember his stinking name because he was in the class of 2017. Kid from Louisville that played in our program that, that went to a prep school in Vegas. And it was a complete joke. I mean, the basketball was fine, but the rest of it was a joke. And, Charlie, how much – oh, go ahead, Jim. Finish well, well, what I was going to say was was that, you know, we, we'd always been careful to not – be too prejudiced against what Bosco is doing with the undergrad stuff because they have been successful in the postgrad route. They've done a very good job in that regard. And from my, from my perspective, it was more of just going up and watching the kids play. I know Maravella and his staff, they are uh, very protective, protective of their product overall. Um, if their undergrad stuff goes as well as their postgrad, the basketball stuff will be outstanding. It's, I just wonder sometimes if it's necessary and 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 with with some kids, with maybe an occasional kid, it, it it probably will really help them. Um, it'll change their. It'll give them another chance. It may it may impact their ceiling a little bit. And there's probably one kid there where that may be the case. Um, and and in a lot of cases, it may just help their floor. Um, and for the most part, Charlie, I don't know if you would agree with this or not. <laughs> Kids that go prep school, even for a post grad, they don't tend to change their ceiling too much, but they do. They could change their floor and make them a little bit more playable, more of an option as a freshman. Is that 
if you were look if you were talking to a kid, would you would that be part of your conversation, or are you just not as strongly as about it as I am? Well, no, that's about right. I, I would take it that I mean, it's not much going to change unless you are already a top player in the country um, as an undergrad. Not much is going to change it. I think it'll give you more exposure as now you're going to ri- really ride the wave in a sense of a top player in the country to get more exposure. Um, the interesting part you you talk about, you know going to watch this prep school, I had a parent I'm talking to today um, about his son went to a tryout locally here in Dallas, and he didn't know about reclassification, right? So that's the, you know, so so reclassification, someone's in the eighth grade, and they can actually, you know, you know, get held back. But now, I guess the thing is, Jim, both gyms, they're holding players back two grades. Like, literally, some of the players was on this team that held back two grades. And um, I'm just, I mean, again, I'm kind of like an old school person when it comes to this, guys. Like, I don't I don't get it. I mean, I, I guess, you know, you do what you got to do. But I don't get the, the point of, like, putting so much emphasis on a specialization of, of playing basketball. And, like, this is what we're going to do to get to the next level. I don't, I don't get that because I didn't do it. So I don't. I, mean, I don't knock it. I try to do my best at understanding it, but I think it's just it's just interesting where you got a guy like you're talking about a Dave Maravella undergrad, but it's like think about that track. It's going to be one or two players that's going to have really an opportunity. Everybody else, I don't know. Well, and I, and I will say there. Look, it was an open gym environment. Right. It was ni- it was ninety minutes. It was it was good basketball for an open gym. It was very competitive and for. A lot of those kids, it was more competitive, more competition than they would be getting at their high school team mm-hmm. during this during this time of year. Right. So there is there is that selling point. Um, the other point they'll make is they'll they'll talk about schedule and, and that's, right. that's hit and miss. With some schools, it is it, you know, with, but with a lot of these schools, and I've not looked at Bosco's schedule, so I'm not trying to being very careful not to lump them in. Right. To uh, to my my grand my overall issue with it right a lot of these schedules will talk about we play this team we play that team and that's fine five or six of their games they might play in one of those holiday tournaments that get on espn or that have that caliber of competition um but then the rest of their schedule is garbage you know the rest of their schedule is playing the i'm not knocking uh, unaffiliated religious schools unaffiliated christian schools unaffiliated (laughs) bishop lutheran unaffiliated whatever yeah bishop sycamore Um, yeah, but that's it. More, the, the schools yeah. that that don't fall. Now, Indiana is a little bit more conservative in that regard, right. where we definitely have the IHSA and and there's it's the only game in town, really. I mean, there are some there's a couple of homeschool ki- programs that do produce kids um, that really are there because they want to be homeschooled. It has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we, and we've had those kids come through our, our program and they've been good basketball players, our AAU program. They've been really good basketball players and. And and seemingly well educated, they go on to college and are successful academically. So, so I don't see uh, you know too many red flags there. But but it's it is the it is the parent or it is the situations where I, I think maybe sometimes it's, we always want to blame the parents. Parents are always easy targets. But but we we do it is a situation where the, I watched their undergrad kids this weekend and as. I enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoy, just flat out. I enjoyed watching it. Mm-hmm. I think they, it is a competitive environment. I don't know. There's probably a couple kids that it will really make a difference in their recruiting. Yeah. Um, the, the, the breakdown of that is probably not for this radio show, you know, um, unless Jim wants to know more about it, but mm-hmm. um, you know, the, but it, it, it is a situation. There were no high majors there. Right. Um, wow. Which that doesn't matter. But again, we, you know, it, We've talked as much as we talk about Indiana on this on this podcast on this radio station. Uh, that that does that does play a role um, for my podcast. It's that we're going to record later today. It's going to be a big part of our conversation tonight when we record it. So uh, and we probably will break down the kids individually, at least uh, a lot of them. But there is a um, there is a a breakdown in my mind where it doesn't change anybody's ceiling, and so at that point. Um, and I want to get to your reclassification thing quickly. Yeah. At that point, um, 
I guess if it does change a kid's floor, that that does make him more recruitable. And I can right. see that being attractive, but I don't know. There's still a lot of work that goes into it that can be done while still staying at your school. True. These, these three or four weeks of open gym aren't going to, I don't think are going to be the difference between these guys getting recruited or not. Right. Um, now, again, COVID's played a big role with the classes of, of 2022 and, and, and a little bit with 2021 and certainly with 2023. Um, so there are probably two or three seniors that have been missing a lot of exposure who may be able to recoup some of it. Right. Um, especially one of the smaller school kids, uh, the, the Landon Babuziak from, from Hanover central. Um, but they're, they'll have a good team. Now they got a couple of kids that weren't going to make it at their big schools. They weren't going to play a lot. So those kids transfer. I don't see any, any, I didn't see any change in those kids. Right. Um, but you know, they're still. His, and Jim's dropped off. There's still, there's still a disconnect on how much it's really going to impact their, their ceiling. And I, I just don't think that it's there now, even, even like super athletic kids who might be raw skill wise, right. like, guys like me, guys like you, the, those are the guys we, we look for, right. That's exactly right. That. So it, it still doesn't change their ceiling. That's right. All it does is put them in a position where they can get more skilled and, and eventually, again, impact their floor. But um, the, the reclassification part, Charlie, um, I have coached a kid that could have been a two-year reclass and nobody would have even blinked when it came to his right. age. He did not turn 18 until September of his freshman year of college. Right, right. Right. Um, wow. His mom was the head of the math department at Carmel. He ended up being a Division One kid from Carmel at, at Canisius. He graduated in '96. Mm-hmm. Um, he was so young that he could have started late and been held, you know, late or a year later, and then been held back, held back a year. And I don't think anybody would have blinked. Now, I don't know if that's always the case. That's well, pretty, right. Well, I, I tell you what. I tell you this. I was talking about this last night. So, so my birthday is coming up on Sunday. Uh, September 26th. Yeah. yeah. So you were, so you were really old for your grade or really young for your, I grade was really grade. young. So there you go. I turned 18 as a freshman. So, so you're, but you're the same boat. So I was, so when you bring up him, I was in the exact same boat. Yeah, absolutely. I was in the exact same boat. I, so I, I concur exactly what you're talking about with this young man, because I turned 18 as a freshman, um, uh, at, in, in Bloomington. So, uh, yeah, but you know, it, it it was a thing, but now that was a thing when you were going to Oak Hill Academy, right? You were a Jerry right. Stackhouse, right? You were, you know, the Mount Verdes weren't really around, but I forget, I think it's Union uh, in, in Virginia, right? I forget Union, Union Fork, wasn't it? Fork, yeah, Fork, Fork, yeah, something like that. But, you yeah. know, you know, you, exactly, you know what I'm talking about. But, like, that was a thing if you were on that level, you know, but uh, now it's like, I'm not dis- no disrespect. They're just popping up. Oh, the pop up ones. There's a ridiculous. question of you know why 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 is this you know eighth grade parent having to think about even on his mind for FOMO right the fear of missing out. <laughs> yeah, my kids, you know, the kids' friends are have being held back two years. Yeah, for what? I mean, that's kind of like my question, right? Wow. That would be the that would be the first question is how old is he? I mean, yeah, well, you no, he's, it, young. he's yeah, if he's Matt, young. If if Matt Tribal would have done it, that's the, the he's no longer a kid. I mean, yeah, he's, what he's eight years younger than me. So yeah, he's young, um, but I think it's more of a like like he he was like the dad was shocked that he didn't even know. But I'm like, okay, for me, it's always been something. I mean, it's always been a thing. I, I've been around sports a while. You have been. I've known about it. It's just not. I think it's now just more prevalent, Jim. It's out there now where people are blatantly talking about we're going to do this. Like this is what we're going to do for this track, oh, yeah. this path. And in, it's hard to do in Indiana, by the way, because mm. the school, the, the way the tax situation works is you effectively, kindergarten notwithstanding, you effectively get 12 years of education mm-hmm. for your for your tax money. So um, some schools are a little easier. They may look away, but but um, like if, if you lived here, you could not repeat. Leave lived in Carmel, you could not repeat the eighth grade and get it and do that. You'd have to go. You basically would have to 
do something else for a year. Now that's, wow. there's a lot more legitimate options academically to do that, such as we have like an, a, an option school. Uh -huh. um, that's, that's probably not the right word for it. I think that's the bad, that's where the kids who have problems. Yeah, the co-op, I, I know. Um, so there's, a, there's a, yeah, there's an, yeah, yeah, there's, you can homeschool them for, you know, we got a, we've got a, a Catholic school here that, uh, that a lot of kids go to just in general. Uh, that's private, obviously, then you could do that. And it's been a while since we've had a kid here uh, re reclassify. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's very popular in a lot of other places still. Um, but but in the state of Indiana, it's tough. And most of the schools basically adhere to it and don't make it easy. Like if Blo like Bloomington, a lot of those kids, mm -hmm. been, I mean, Leal, Leal reclassed. Right. He reclassed, and he, I think he had to go to a to a, a religious, a private school um, that happened to be a religious affiliation. I don't know which one, but um, yeah, they he repeated the eighth grade down there in Bloomington. I, and I don't again, I don't know when his birthday is. Right. I think when you're if you're young for your grade, I could see it. I think him and and Noah Jagger both did that. I think they both repeated it like seventh or eighth grade. I can't remember which which one it is, but they both uh, both reclassed in the 2020. So got it. And then Christian, he he graduated early, right? Is that right? Yeah, he was he I think his situation too was he's maybe started late or somewhere mm -hmm. along the way had Great. you know, obviously yeah. you, we call it reclass, that's a basketball thing, right? It's right. you know, when you get a kid, you know, when they're in elementary school, they repeat a grade. They don't no one's saying these reclass. Reclass, exactly. Maybe they do now, especially if he's good athletically. But yeah, right. I think Christian was supposed to be a twenty uh a twenty twenty kid. And mm -hmm. then was in 2021 and then basically graduated early to be with his class, to be right. with the class that he originally started with or, right. or either that, or he was started late and then they just decided to go ahead and graduate him early. But now right. you're seeing a lot of these guys for reasons of getting to the NBA earlier, mm -hmm. whether those are legitimate thoughts or not graduating early. That's right. And and isn't that what Bates is doing? Imani Bates, all of a sudden, yeah. he decided to graduate, and then but he won't be old enough to be in the draft next year. So right, he'll theoretically be two years of college, so two years at Memphis instead of one. And then you look at what Race Thompson right did the exact same thing, but his was more of like a last minute deal. Yeah, I was moving locations, guys. So I see that, oh. <laughs> and we thought we lost you. Now he's gone, and we still might have. We still might have. I, I was out of oh. I was out of town and was gonna like actually try to do this outside in the back patio, and then it started raining, and so I decided, eh, I'll just come home and get behind my computer and my mic. So, yeah, uh, it the rain was an issue today as well, so that's uh, all kinds of things. But uh, quickly, gonna go, uh, go to a break. We'll be back with more Ron Felling. Hopefully, joining us next segment. Indiana Sports Beat Radio coming to you from. The uh, Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios mobile from uh, Indiana's football complex. Back right after this. We'll be right back to the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Whether you're looking. All right, let's try this again. All right, all right. And make sure my settings are correct. <laughs> you want to stop, stop me from. Stop me from telling my felling stories. Go ahead and just mute me if I can. Oh, no, you're good, man. <laughs> Whatever. Let it fly. He may Open not remember it. I mean, it's been uh, 20. Yeah. Was it 1994 probably was the year when that happened? Oh, well, yeah. 97? 96? Wait, well, it was 94 was the, when I was. Hello. When it happened. Yes, this is Ron Felling. Hello. This is, this, this is Ron Felling. Right, I'm going to Ron Felling. to Jim Coyle and Charlie Miller. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, can you hear him? Hey, Coach, how yeah. are you? I'm fine. How are you guys? I'm Good, great. Coach. This is Jim Coyle and Charlie, of course, you know. I, I, I have a, a uh, mutual acquaintance of yours, Odie. <laughs> Odie. Oh, Odie. Oh, my goodness. My goodness, Odie, is he a dandy or not? Oh man, he's something. I I saw him like a week ago, uh, at, at the alley bar. I think was the last time, or maybe Crazy Horse. Oh yeah, right. One, one of the two. How are you doing? Right. Well, I'm hanging in there for an older chap. You know, I'm 80, I'm eighty two, and 
So I'm still going. I feel good. I got a, I've had a light stroke in my cerebellum, which is responsible for balance. And, uh, so, uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta take my time walking. I mean, I walk fine, but, uh, uh, I, you know, if I make a little sachet, I might go, uh, might go down once in a while. <laughs> Man, you sound great. I can tell you that. We're still in break right now. We'll be back with, yeah. Uh, but you sound great. Well, I don't know. I'm hanging in there for an older chap. Well, I look forward to hopefully meeting you sometime. I, I live in Bloomington, as, yeah. in around Bloomington as well. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, good. I'll just, just, uh, meet you wherever. Yeah. American Legion. With American League. Yeah. Yeah. Where I go. yeah. Hey, American Coach, Legion on the porch. Coach, this my name is Jim Reamer. I'm doing yes. the do it week Mondays with Jim and Charlie. And and back in the mid nineties, I coached with Bloomington Red. And I don't oh, yeah. know if you guys okay. yeah, with Pryor and all those guys. Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't do you remember know. recruiting a player named Wes Allen? Wes Allen. No, I'm, 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 right. no, I can't. I, well, then you probably right, guys, we're coming back from break. We got 10 seconds, and we're back on the air. Bloomington's number one Honda dealer. <laughs> Come see us at the all new Andy Moore Honda, now in Bloomington. <clears throat> this segment is brought to you by Psalm's Family of Restaurants. Fresh, local, family. Now back to the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios for more in Eater. Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhano of Bloomington. Here's Jim Coyle. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio, of course, coming to you here on this Monday. Charlie Miller with us, uh, Jim Reamer with us, and special guest Ron Felling. Coach Felling, how are you, sir? Well, I'm hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. <laughs> Charlie Miller, man. You're our old friend Charlie Miller with us as well, Charlie. Uh, you, we've talked a lot about Coach Falling and, and and all right. so much of what he's meant to you guys. That's right. Well, hey, just I mean, uh, you know, there goes Coach right there. I mean, the only that's what I remember him just the, his sayings and I remember jokes. I still say these jokes to myself to this day and still laugh thinking about Coach. Just kind of hanging around. And I can see Coach right now at practice, being as active as he want to be. Uh, you know, kind of leading the way on how to set up cuts yeah. and how to move. And I mean, he's in your ear on the sideline. So I mean. You know, what a great person. What a great personality. Coach, when you were back coaching in high school, I think it was Thank Illinois, did, you. Did, did you see yourself one day where you ended up at, at, at the upper level of, of Division One basketball and, and being a part of such a gigantic program and all that? I'm sure that wasn't in a master plan, but that's, that's how it ended up and how it happened. Well, I'll tell you what, we, you know, we had a great high school program. We won four state championships in high school, and we no one's won back-to-back -back undefeated state championships. So we went 68-0, and I get a call. I'm in the, it's the middle of the night, about 3 in the morning, and I get a call, and, they, and they, this is Bob Knight. I said, you know, 3 in the morning, and they just got beat out in the NIT tournament. I think it was by UCLA. I'm not sure. But I, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, – uh, he said, this is Bob Knight. I said, well, yeah, you're talking to Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, and he said, no, this is Bob Knight. Well, he, gave, he said a few other choice words. And and, and uh, so I knew it was him. And he asked me to come. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, count me in. And he hangs up. <laughs> oh. I was looking at the ceiling, say, I'm going to Indiana. And, you know, so anyway, that's the way it happened. Oh, man. Yeah, that's quick and easy. That kind of that reminds me of the Michael Lewis recruiting story where he slaps him on the back, walks out the door, says, "Welcome to Indiana." But yeah, they don't mess around too long. But so then you go from being a, a, a high school coach of, of great success in Illinois uh, to moving over to a, a college program also that is used to success, but wasn't having that at the time. But and you were an integral part, and in so many players coming here. I know I'm talking to Charlie and many other guys. Uh, I know that uh, they wouldn't be or have come to Indiana if it hadn't been for you. Well, I don't know about that, but that's what my job. I got out and with Calvert Cheney and Charlie and, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of, you know, some of, oh, Brian Evans, he's the third leading scorer. And then A.J. Guyton, I recruited him out of Peoria. I knew the coach there. 
uh, and uh, also Chris Reynolds, uh, Peoria Central, and uh, and uh, so anyway, I got those two. But anyway, three of them, Calvert are the top. They're in the top five scores in all time at Indiana. Yeah. Those three. <clears throat> Go ahead, Charlie. No, no, no. I mean, that's I mean, it's an amazing testament to coach. I mean, again, I knew I knew about what he did in, in high school in in, uh, in Illinois and. And even the high the, the players that went on from high school that now are coaches, right? So, and, and just the testament of players, and, and that, to me, it was coaches, coach, coach Felon's personality. I mean, you know, bubbly, bubbly, positive, optimistic guy, and uh, you know, was very transparent too on, on opportunities. So, I mean, I, I'm I'm very I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Jim, you watch a lot of basketball as well. Jim Reamer on here. And people like Coach Felling, there has to be a difference in what they see in players. There's a difference in recruit. I mean, a lot of people can recruit top players, but to see something in a guy that something someone else doesn't, that's that's a gift that a lot of people don't have. Well, I think in Coach Felling's case, no different than Coach Dockage when, he, when they both were assistants, that you got to know who your boss is too. You know, and you got to know who's going to fit in their system. And when you look at how well coach Felling taught motion and, and how much he believed in it and, and the, the amount of detail he could put into it just on his own, he, it was easier for him to spot the kind of players that were going to succeed in Indiana and in, in, in any role. I mean, and not just, not just the scores. I mean, he's, I mean, obviously it, just building that whole program and understanding you have to have people who are willing to get those dudes open too. Well, let me tell you, something. you see something. I look in the mirror every day, and I don't see that guy. Uh, well, you're, yeah. See, I, that's, I was telling. I've told Charlie the story a couple times. That back when I started coaching, you college coaches could come to our practices in the, at the summer, the AAU stuff, and we would come down to Bloomington South every now and then, so it would be easier for maybe uh -huh. Indiana coaches yeah. to come watch us. All right. And you and I met. I don't. I, if you don't remember the player that I referred to during the break, you may not remember the story. But you came to a practice to look at that kid, and after the practice, you had a notepad and you took me aside and told me how bad my practice was. And <laughs> and I learned. I learned a lot, and uh, I learned a lot from that discussion. And I I didn't mind one bit that you were blunt, and uh, you liked the kids, but you didn't like the practice. And I, I learned a hell of a lot that day. And uh, I've, I've really, well, enjoyed, really enjoyed you ever since. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. My God, you ought to take a gun to my head. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I, I don't uh, And this was at Bloomington? It was, yeah, we back then. It, and Coach Knight came like two weeks later to watch the same, the same couple right. of players. And, and um, you remember who they were? Yeah, well, the the one was Wes was was Wes Allen, a six eight kid from uh, West Central High School. I, I'm sure Joe McDuffie. You probably you know Joe, right? Okay, I was Joe. Oh, here a lot. Yeah, about Joe would have been Joe would have been the one telling you about him. Um, and then the other right. one was it was either Lamont Rowland from New Albany or, or Travis Best from yes. Frankfurt. And right. uh, so that those were the guys I think you guys were recruiting at the time, but. The um, it, it was um, the the it, it was just a fun it was a good experience for me and and of course Coach Dockage then set it up to where I could come to practice wherever I wanted and I was oh, young, yeah. young yeah. enough back then that I didn't care how far I had to drive I was going to practice so well, Coach Felling what the uh, Coach yeah. Felling when you were out there looking for all these guys what is it that caught your eye for uh, for what you were looking for the, the specific athletic or or the talent what was it that you were looking for Well I was looking for a kid to take coaching you know that's first coming to Indiana play for Bob Knight you're going to have to you're going to have to pay uh pay attention and and uh, uh learn the motion offense and and also uh uh, one of the big things, I was a shooting coach, and you, you got to be able to shoot. I took a uh, coach tonight to see uh, Brian Evans, and he said, oh, I don't want to mind, you know. He, and uh, so he was flying back from uh, North Carolina. I forget the kid's name that we saw. So <clears throat> anyway, we go there, and he lets, lets us in. And this is at night. Just a manager let us in. You know, no one else is there, and, and uh, you can't talk to him. So I told the ma that manager go down there and tell him I wanted him to uh, 
uh, he'll walk around the circle, the, the three point circle, and, and he'd rebound for him and shoot three point shots. And he went around three times. That's around and back, and then around and back. And then I had to dribble into the free throw line and shoot off the dribble going both ways about 10 times. And then I had the guy pass to him. So he could, he had to be cut and make a pass and make his target. And, and the guy passed to him and he'd shoot off the pass. Well, then the coach said, well, man, this kid can shoot. Him. So that's what I've been telling him. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so so he said, well, let's go talk. Said, you can't go talk to him. It's still legal. But it was, uh, I was decided to see if he can't come to uh, Bloomington tomorrow morning if his family is able to do that. So that's what happened. And then he ended up signing and then he ended up the all time leading scorer. Crazy. Hey, uh, Jake. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, you please. Uh, AJ Guyton was the other one of the others beside Cheney, and uh, uh, we went over to see you know over to see him. But that recruited Chris Reynolds too, who's now the athletic director at Bradley University. <clears throat> and uh, Chris was not a shooter, but man, was he a floor leader and, and a defensive player? But so I got two out of. I knew the coach there. I got two out of Peoria Central in, in Illinois, and that was A.J. and Chris Ross. That's right. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, recruiting was a lot of fun, but I'll tell you what, it helped me tremendously to coach earlier in Illinois, and Illinois is a hotbed for basketball, you know, and so is Indiana. But uh, uh, recruited uh, – uh, I'm drawing a blank now uh, – the big dog, Purdue. Glenn oh, Robinson. Robinson. Uh, Glenn Robinson, yes. Well, anyway, that didn't work out real well. You know? <laughs> so, uh, we, did, we did, you know, Coach said, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Coach, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure he was in on Chris Weber, Coach. But, but I saw Chris Weber recently shared a story of how um, uh, um, he, he came into the locker room, and I, I think this was Calvert's uh, sophomore, junior year. This is when La Lawrence Funderburg was their coach. And Chris Weber said that Lawrence Funderburg kind of non-verbally told him not to come. I'm not sure if you, you guys seen that story, but I guess he was being recruited. And uh, obviously Lawrence Funderburg oh, yeah. agreed but who knows? I mean, I, that's before my time. But it was just interesting to know Chris Weber also was on the radar. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, Weber was here at practice one time. There we go. Uh, yeah. You know, it, and, you know, we went to uh, – uh, I was recruiting uh, the kids at Michigan, head coach of Michigan. Now. And so we go up there and, and uh, we fly in there and we're, we're waiting out in the car. And here comes uh, here comes uh, uh, the Michigan coach and the assistant, and uh, out of there, out of uh, there, they had a visit the same day. Uh -huh. So we're going to ten. So we go up and knock on the door, and uh, to get in, and no one answers. <laughs> oh, no. Coach Steve Fisher, yeah, Coach Fisher, Brian, uh, 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 Brian right. Gus, yeah, yeah, wow. Wow. So we knew they just left, so you knew that they were home. But they must have told them, hey, nine, I guess he told them night was coming. They, they told them to not answer, and then, uh, I'll be damned if they did. They didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to help on the way home. Oh, That's man, hilarious. I can only imagine. <laughs> Boy, I would have think that would have left him in a little angry mood. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Well, it was. I thought we were going to bring the airplane down. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Not surprised there. What are some of the other recruits that maybe were close that didn't pan out? There were so many that, that did, obviously. But what are some that, that you really thought were going to happen that didn't happen? Well, uh, uh, you know, I guess, what uh, you know, Lawrence Funderburg came and then he left. And he was a, quite a talent, man, quite a talent. And uh, uh, I, I was up, up there three or four times to see him and talk to the coach. And then we, <clears throat> we had a visit there at the school. 
And, uh, but anyway, he came for a year and, and, um, uh, and left. He was, he was quite a talent. Uh, that's one of the I'm best talking. classes in the history of Indiana basketball. Uh, those seven guys that came in, I mean, the Grams and, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Leary, and uh, Calvert, yeah. uh, Cheney, or I mean, uh, Chris Reynolds. Uh, so that, that, that class was just, it's one of the all time best in the history of Indiana basketball. Right. I, I would agree to that. I would agree to that. And, uh, uh, it was just, uh, it was just, uh, it was just a great time recruiting those kids because it was excited every time, you know, that, that you'd go see them. And then I remember I, I had two home visits and, uh, 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 I, I saw him, uh, uh, play many times and, uh, oh, now I'm going dry. He's from Indiana, up in Indianapolis. His folks were a doctor. Uh, 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 he hurt his leg. Yeah, Henderson. Uh, Henderson. Uh, Henderson. Yeah, Alan, yeah. Alan Henderson. Oh, Alan. Oh, Henderson. oh Alan. Oh, Alan. Yeah. I recruited Alan Henderson too. Yeah, that was a tough time. That all during the, the time during the nineties, Indiana was so close to winning oh. a national championship. Uh, that was one of the times when he hurts his knee. And goes down, but that the group during the '90s, Charlie was there too later on. But they were so close to winning a national title, and uh, were not able to get that done. During that. that had to be very difficult. Yeah, um, yeah, it was. And uh, we had uh, uh, Henderson also. Uh, rec- uh, you know, um, Alan, he he died. Uh, Eric Anderson. Eric Anderson. I recruited Eric also in. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I, I was just, uh, um, if I liked him, I went after him, you know, so, and, uh, you know, I, I saw Eric play probably three times, and I called him every once a week on the phone, and, and then when I didn't, coach would call him, I guess, and, and so, but anyway, we got Eric, and Eric was quite a, quite a kid. You know, he said he told me that uh, when he played for the Knicks, he wasn't getting to play all that long. And uh, oh, now I'm drawing a play. Oh, who's a big, who's a big center? So I said Ewing. And Patrick Ewing. Pat, see, I'm I'm 82. I'm not slipping. But anyway, he said at the end of the one year that Patrick Ewing came to him and gave him a check for $100,000. He said, you don't get to play much, and you bust your butt every day in practice. And he said, you had a better player, and he said, I want you to have it. And he gave Eric a hundred grand. Wow. That's a great story. That. Man, wow. that's a great story. I look forward to uh, digging into that at some point. That's uh, very cool to hear. Because no, you know, don't hear that in the pros very often. No, I have no idea if that's right or wrong, but why would it, you know, I would, you know, Eric say that, but he said, you know, I was one time we were in playing in, in, uh, New York and we went in and they said, would you like to see the locker room? You know? Uh, and we, of course, yeah, we went and I was looking around and I couldn't find Eric Anderson's locker. It was behind the door. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, if, if Eric was, if Eric was, uh, Dressing, you know, he'd open the door, he might get hit. He was, he was right directly behind. If the door was open all the way, you couldn't see Eric. Wow. <laughs> That's hard to believe you could not see that big dude. Uh, was, so was when you were in college at the times, was, was your favorite part the recruiting aspect, uh, the coaching part? I know you have you developed a lot of relationship with these guys that you recruited that, that you still keep today, like Charlie, for example. Well, I'll tell you what. You don't you don't win with uh, with uh, excuse me I'll say it on turd you know you <laughs> win. and I'll tell you you know and I'll tell you Charlie and, and all of them all of the good kids and I wouldn't recruit them I wouldn't want to bring somebody home and you know that and and it's not a bill you know say it's a problem or not going or, or you know doing something. Doing something wasn't wasn't in the best interest of him and and Indiana basketball. Coach sure. and and maybe Charlie can answer this too. How important is the advocacy of an assistant coach to a player when it comes to things like 
playing time and role and, and, and maybe even time put into development? Well, I'm sure that that there is, but you know, at at Indiana, Knight pretty much, uh, yeah. you know, you, you didn't have a whole lot of say. What he, you know, and uh, so, you know, I you could recommend, hey, this kid, I thought he had a great practice day, and oh, I think, well, you know, look, I'll do the coaching. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys but, did you ever just like tell him no man you're maybe not wrong but maybe you need to keep taking a deeper look because oh, there's oh, oh yeah i mean yeah, you know good. and i had our problems you know and yeah. uh uh but uh uh no i said what uh what i you know well uh, that's what i was there for i mean if you didn't like it you know i guess you know you could say look i don't want you uh, well then don't put me on the road you know, <laughs> you know, so, you know, I had, I said my saying and what I thought. And then if he didn't, you know, then that's up to him. You know, yeah. I didn't push it. I just said what, 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 uh, I thought and, uh, about, you know, being a good citizen, going to school, getting your grades, the whole thing, playing basketball, uh, uh, representing the university. I mean, that's all, that was all very important to coach, you know? So, uh, therefore I couldn't, you know, in the vernacular, I couldn't bring any turds home, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You can't polish one, no matter what, Ken doesn't polish up. Right. Um, and so you went through all that and I, then obviously, uh, the end didn't come well for anybody, uh, there and, and, and it right. comes down to a close. That was not obviously fun for anyone or how anyone wanted to see that. But what was that like going through that, dealing with that? Uh, well, you know, um, it was – it wasn't great. It wasn't good. Uh, but, you know, uh, a guy's got to – you know, for the betterment of the kids, the betterment of basketball, you, uh, some things just got to be said and got to be done. And, and uh, you know, and then it must fall, the chips fall where they may. So, so that's. Uh, I mean, Charlie, you were part of that. So, I, and you know that uh, that's basically how it was. I mean, uh, and, and that's how it happened. You were there. So I'll let you take over instead of me. No, no. I mean, you know, and, and, and as a and as a, a, a student athlete at the time, you really don't know all of what's going on. So I can only imagine what Coach Felling was going through, um, especially somebody that was near and dear to us. That's no longer here to speak about the situation we're talking about in a, in a sense. But like um, you don't you don't look at it. Like 20 plus years later, I have I have a respect and a and a outlook that's different than I had when it was going on because when it's going on you go into survival mode as a player because I mean I'm gonna put it out there coach Felling I mean it's like you know every felt like every postseason there was always something coming up that just really warned you as a player yes. where it's like man like can we just play can we just play basketball and not be questioned about you know who's leaving and what's going exactly. on in the locker room and just all kind of neck, and you don't realize the impact it has on you as a young oh, 18, yeah. 19 year old player. You, why am I playing scared? Just Damn it, because you, you, you were 18 and 19, Charlie. Yeah, I was 45, and it's still going through the same thing, you know. And, 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 and that's my point, right? And here it is, coach. Next Sunday, I'm going to be 45. That's why I have a profound respect for somebody like yourself because of what you what we all experience, but just the opportunity. But I, again, what, who cares what happens to the scoreboard? What we all are doing today, you know, I know I'm doing a lot of stuff because of you, the shot doctor. That's what we called him, uh, Jim Reamer, Jim McCoy. He was a shot doctor. He, as he would say, I will shoot your eyes out. And one of his <laughs> eyes, he shot out. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that, that – that, because we all remember those last years. There were just you just mentioned the postseason. Yeah. It, it looked like a grind from the outside. Yeah. Is what led to that? And because that's it was all just 
funneled. You can see it funneling toward the end yeah. with, with, with those postseasons. Well, what? You know, I, 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 I don't know. I was looking at it from, from the inside on, you know, and, and I think there was a lot of fault. Maybe, uh, uh, I think everybody might have had a little something to do with it. And, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, who knows what's going through uh, everybody's mind at the time, including coaches. And, uh, uh, you know, I've still got a lot of respect for Coach Knight for what he's done and how he's, you know. And, right. But, uh, uh, well, I don't want to say this, you know, but, you, you, you know, some things you just can't do. Right. Well, there, but you know. I was uh, – so I'm not – I'm on the outside looking in at that point and – very much on the outside looking in now, but it seemed because you know this is it seemed Coach Knight. Coach Knight had two really strong, deep classes that, for whatever reason, some of it was injury related, didn't end up carrying the program for the the, the time that you would think they did. That was the Sharon group and the the classes of '93 and '94, and then you had all those guys that I thought that came in that. You know, like you know, Collier and 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 Wrecker and all those guys that recruit. You know, and, and even in Neil's case, those those guys were. Um, you know, I mean, I think Neil was going to Indiana no matter what. It seemed like you know, if they wanted him, he was going to go. Right. There. And maybe to some extent, Wrecker. And I right. thought Coach Knight removed himself from the road recruiting wise, and I think that made it tougher to get a sense for were these guys going to be the kinds of kids that could play at Indiana. And, and, the, and those ended up being the guys that transferred out too. And so when you're right. having all those kids transfer out, that's the kind to me, maybe Charlie can correct me to me. That was where all the tension was, at least on the outside was that these guys were leaving and, and a fan in my case and, and somebody also coaches who coached in the summer and saw who was on the road. You know, you'd look over there and right. you'd see Shashevsky and Dean Smith and, and John Thompson, and, sure. and then you'd see yeah. either you or Coach Dockage, you know, and Coach Knight wasn't right. there. And um, I know he didn't like he, – he didn't love recruiting AAU stuff. But, no. But that's where you got to see kids no. play four or five times in a, in a weekend and really get right. to know right. if they could play. So I mean, that's my – I don't – I'd really not – taking you to a question that was just me sort of telling my where right. i saw it from the, I, the other side of the court <laughs> well that's actually a good time for a quick break that i've got to take and i've got to jump into the football side of things i'm gonna let you guys take the last uh, couple of minutes on this today and if coach can stick around with you guys great but if not i want to thanks coach felling I, I look forward to meeting you uh soon hopefully and getting to see you out and about uh i'm gonna stop by and have a hot dog with you over at the american legion uh, but man, I can't thank you enough, Coach. It's looked so forward to talking to you, and uh, great uh, letting hearing you talk to Charlie and, and, and as well. But uh, I'm going to take off, guys. I love Charlie. And I love Charlie, and I love all those guys. Love and you know, uh, uh, it's just uh, tough to see uh, some of them pass and and are not are not or be a failure, and and, and uh, not many of them are because uh, we recruited good kids. And that's all I can say. We created good kids that had an upbringing. And uh, uh, I don't want to say this on the air, but I will. We didn't recruit a bunch of turds. <laughs> that's, that's right. right. That's the truth. That's that's, that's okay. That's clear. That, that we got. I got it now. I'm not a yeah. turd. <laughs> I'm going to jump off here, man, but you got to stay around. I appreciate you. Thank everybody. Most importantly, uh, everybody here and uh, listening and uh, John and everyone else, but coach Felling mostly and coach and fish as well. But I'll be back tomorrow. You guys carry on. We're heading to a break. Thank you. We're back with more Indiana sports beat right after this. We'll be right back to the golf club at Eagle Point Studios for more Indiana sports beat radio with Jim Coyle presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Hey, who's your fan? Coach Felling, if you got to go, we can go ahead and let you go. No, I thought, no, I don't have to go. Okay, okay. Good. We'll, be, we'll be back in about a little less than three minutes. And then when we come back, we'll have about, let me see, we'll have about five minutes until the show ends. And I'll just let you, Charlie, and okay. Jim Reamer talk until we yes, finish up. And then I'll, you, I'll come in and uh, wrap it up when we need to. Okay, so about a half hour? No, 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 no. No, no. 
We'll be back on the air in about two and a half minutes, and then we have okay. five minutes, and then we're done. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yes, okay. Sir. Although yeah, people can still see us and hear us if they go to the YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, we will, so we will you got a hot mic right point. now, Coach. That's yeah, good good call. You're on <laughs> you're on the air on YouTube, but not on the radio air. Yeah, we we're, have, we're still streaming. We're just not doing what we they we're not doing radio. So we we didn't want you to all of a sudden start calling Charlie a turd. And <laughs> <laughs> you can put that on your yeah, resume, quick, Charlie. Uh, I like that. I was away during your all segment before we called Coach Felling. What what was the topic? Because I'm putting together. Oh, just stuff. Oh, uh, just more so catching up. Just kind of re recollecting on uh, IU basketball, uh, Coach Felling's uh, recruiting uh, efforts and the players he recruited, and just it's just his philosophy. And well, I'm I'm talking about before we had him on before that that segment where I stepped away. We were going through some prep school, like oh yeah, prep school stuff. The, game, yeah, the games and stuff that I saw this weekend was um, two, two like two leagues, and then we we watched a prep school practice. Then Charlie and I talked a little bit about prep school and kids who uh, reclassify in, in either direction, really. Okay. Right. Hey Jim that, Jim, that school was Fort Union. Is that is that right? Yeah. 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 Did I flip it? Union no, no, no. I, I did. I, okay. I said Union. So I didn't finish it. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't finish it. I got a good coach question for Coach Felling when we when we come back on. Uh, if he's wants to talk about recruiting. All right. <laughs> we're we're going to hit up Illinois. We're going to hit up the topic, state of Illinois. Oh, yeah. Let's see, that's where we got coach, five, we'll have there. five minutes when we get you back. Know, you know that, I, Charlie? Yes, sir. You know, I I uh, I had Greg Popovich on my freshman team, my first job, and I paddled his butt. <laughs> That's awesome! Wow. How about that? At Maryville, Maryville, Indiana. He was a freshman. I taught freshman hell. I walked in the classroom, and this guy was chasing him around. He was running. I said, "What's going on here?" Uh, here, I hate to interrupt, but we're coming back from break, Ron. Here we go. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's a great story to share. Let's share that story on that's awesome. By Remax Advanced Realty, oh home post team by Cheryl Sizemore. Now back to the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Here's Jim Coyle. No Jim Coyle. He had to go off and get the press conference stuff going, but we still got Charlie Miller, Jim Remarial, as well as Coach Ron Felling. I'm going to hand it over to them. Coach, tell us that story you were just saying before we came back from break about uh, your your job when you were coaching and teaching at Maryville. Well, I was at Maryville. It was my first job, and uh, I was going to be freshman basketball coach. With This was a freshman. I had him on. My, but, but anyway, I was teaching health class, and I walked in and here was this gal chasing him around the room. I said, hey, what's going on here? She said, Mr. Felling, uh, Greg took my whatever. I don't know what it was. And I said, Greg, out in the hall, you know, and I said, let me go. He said, you going to paddle me, coach? And I said, yes, I am. I go in and get, but I gave a, I gave Greg Popovich three licks. <laughs> when he was wow. Now hey, Greg. Oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. Now he's Olympic. Olympic championship coach. You know, he's had a great career. Oh gosh, well, yeah. Well, hey Jim, before you get to your question, I know I know it's going to be great. Um, I just think, coach, about a lot of the basketball managers that have gone on to become head coaches, mm -hmm. and that that was around, you know, uh, like the Launch Franks. How was that for you? Uh, as a as a as a coach, now understanding that Lawrence Frank is leading, you know, NBA teams and other managers went on like Joe Bonasar has impacted basketball player development. How's that for you, coach? Well, you know, I'm proud of him. I'm yes, glad for him, and uh, uh, I really am. And it's great to see people coming out of our program that. Yes, sir. That, uh, have reached for the stars and have been successful. Yes, I just wish that uh, I, I could have been there. You know, right. uh, back in that back in the day, there you didn't have a. You know, I've heard you know uh, Lawrence 
Frank uh, interview on uh, Jerry West, Jerry West up at the at uh, I was working at McCauley's camp, Easy Ed, and uh, uh, I picked uh, uh, Jerry West up at the airport. He was going to speak at the camp, and he he said, "What do they have to eat?" And he said, "I hope it in beans and hot dogs." He said, "I had enough of those when I was growing up." He said, "I hope they got something better." Better than that, but I talked to him about a lot of things, and and I got a lot of respect for not just as a player, but you know, uh, uh, West was just a down home boy from West Virginia, and we just talked about a little bit of everything on the way back, and I took him back to the airport after that, and uh, seen you know I felt like I got to know him, and I I just uh, uh, he told me a lot of a lot of stories, and I said, Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> is is it the truth that will Supposedly, supposedly had twenty thousand women. <laughs> you, remember, you remember that? Man, I heard yes. that. Don't you know, man? That's amazing. If nothing else, it was in his book. Uh, That's right. That's right. But Jimmy, anyway, had that question, Jim? No, my my question was just it, the the Popovich story was way better than my question, by the way. So, the, no, my question was going to be is why we think. I mean, Indiana hasn't really been a factor recruiting Illinois since. You guys left. And well, I don't unless know. I've missed something, I don't. Hey, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, Illinois. Uh, Illinois has always been for us. And I had to watch the kind of kids I brought in. You know, I'll tell you what, AJ and Chris Reynolds were. You know, Chris is the athletic director at Bradley University now. That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. Did you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, just, just, just great kids, and and. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I probably should have recruited some more out of there. Uh, had to fight to Illinois, you know, and yeah. I'm not sure they were on the up and up, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it looks like was it looks like we just lost Ron Fell. Yeah, that was the hang up uh -oh. noise. That I did not. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, it is perfect timing. So it does seem like I did it on purpose. Charlie, again, Joe, thanks, man. That was fun. Yeah, I will. Yeah, thank Coach Felling. For, for what he did for us today. Thanks for coming on uh, to our show today. I want to thank Charlie Miller and Jim Reamer as well. And then for, for Jim Coyle, uh, thanks for listening. And then tomorrow we'll have Mike DeCourcy. We'll have Chronic Hoosier. We'll see what, who else we can get scared up for you as well. And until then, we will see you on the radio. Cool. All right, guys. That was good.